Hey everybody, welcome to the Feature Crew. A very exciting week. OpenAI has made their entry into the sort of full-on, agentic, long-running, cloud-based coding agent experience. Confusingly, it's named Codex. I think this is the third Codex release from OpenAI in their lineage of bad naming. But we're very excited to give this one a try, and it boasts a fine-tuned model with the best agentic coding performance, as well as the ability to run multiple tasks in parallel. So we're very excited for these new features, and we're going to put it through its paces. So here we are in the Codex experience. It's hosted at chatgpt.com slash codex, and it's available to pro subscribers, so we got that set up so we can test it for you. The UI is very simple. You get a box to put in your prompt, and then you get a history of your previous prompts. We've already gone through the process of connecting GitHub and setting up our repositories. Our first test is going to be in our familiar node space, which is basically our feature crew playground. It lets users test different models, both text models and other models to generate images, documents, and we've added a bunch of other spaces here. So what we're going for is a very traditional web dev task, really focused on the front end. There isn't even a back end for this. And so we're really scoping it into a normal task that people might need to deal with in their day-to-day -day development. So this is the landing page, and right now it just has entry points to our chat and image generation space, which is what we most commonly test in this playground. And so what, we're, what we want is, because this is the feature crew playground, we want to add a, some previews for our most recent videos to this landing page above these entry points. So a simple web dev task that might require integrating with YouTube in some way. And we're not being prescriptive. We're not saying use some specific NPM package or use the HTML widget that YouTube provides. We're going to let Codex decide how it accomplishes this. So if I go back over to Codex, I have the prompt pre-written, super simple. Like I said, I'm just asking for that preview widget with the last three videos from our YouTube handle. I've selected the node space repository as well as the master branch and I'll send it off. So you can, you can already see how this is designed for parallel task execution. It puts that prompt in the task history section and then immediately your focus and your cursor is back on that input box. So drilling into what you get in terms of preview and monitoring as it executes. We can see this sort of reasoning like little log window. If you want more details as to what's going on, you could expand this log into a more sort of terminal like or chat like view. If we scroll back up to the top, you can see that it, it starts by basically spinning up a VM in the cloud and downloading your repository, then running NPM install. Something to note is that the only time it has access to the web is during that initial setup phase. So if you're asking it to add some feature where it needs to pull in a new library, it, it falls apart a little bit. Maybe we'll see that later in the video um, because it's not able to NPM install or add a new module or do any sort of thing that ac accesses the web after the initial setup lines. All right, so it's come back and you can see that it worked for two minutes about. And you can already see it getting into this like confusion with how to run NPM scripts. So it did yeah. implement what we asked and we'll, we'll have to test it ourselves to see if it was successful. Yeah. So it couldn't run tests. I mean... It's good in a sense, like they showed this off during the live stream that they've obviously tried to make it like more software engineering and make tests to be like, hey, like this is a validation of output, which is a great way to have like a human can then check it and be like, hey, that's great. The VM yeah. that it's implementing in is killed as soon as it's done implementing. And so you don't get access to some sort of terminal as you would in like a GitHub Copilot workspace or something like that. Yeah. It's spinning up a persistent uh, VM behind the scenes. So right now we're in this state where, okay, it's implemented the code, but in order to test it, I need to get this code on my machine or into some other mm. VM that I can use mm -hmm. to test it. So the only way you can get any test results is by running a test script and then printing those results yeah. into this output window. So, so a, a limitation of the current system. Gotcha. Like the way they encourage it now is to push this PR, right? Like I see mm -hmm. at the top right, we've got like a big like push button. So it makes a new PR, gotcha. And then the first time we tried to record this video, we noticed that the create a new pull request button only worked on private repos and did not work on public repos. And so I'm sure that's something that OpenAI is fixing, but if you're hitting an error where you can't create a pull request, it might be because it's a public repo. So if I can view the pull request that it just made, um, I can easily merge it, but we don't know if it works yet. So now we hit that sort of friction point where I need to somehow test this code. So I will actually uh, check out this PR on, on my own machine and then I'll get it running and we can show that to you. This is partially ex uh, expected though, like we can bring up a console, but the API key is not there. 
as we're trying to get this running, we're noticing that the way that it implemented it, even though this information is publicly available on the web, web the way it chose requires a YouTube API key. So we will go and run and grab that and then create the ENV. But this is an example of some of this friction of like now the dev is still doing a bunch of manual work. Okay, so after some quick setup of grabbing the API key and enabling the U YouTube API on a random Google Cloud project, I was able to get it running and, and we can see that Codex did go in and follow our, our request and added these you know, three videos, which are the correctly the last three videos from our channel. It used the uh, YouTube data API. So it chose an implementation path and it seemed to have worked correctly. There are some issues. It's not correctly handling the title. It's getting some weird characters from the API result. And it also has sort of broken the page itself. Dylan, what, what do you think? Not bad. I mean, we've done this before. At least this is centered, kind of looks reasonable. Like it's kind of maintained all the same like kind of styles. So. Uh, not the worst. I'm We're just going to quickly go ahead and look at this to kind of diagnose and maybe we can fix up the titles and that bit at the bottom. We've given it a textual description of the problems, but the main problems were the text formatting on the YouTube video titles on those widgets and then also the fact that it kind of broke the screen height or the page height for the landing page. So we're going to ask it to fix both of those issues. I really wanted to give it a screenshot of the problems, but Codex does not yet accept images. So we're going to have to go with these, this text description and we'll see if it's able to fix the problem. I am interested to see how it handles the PR on a multi -tool. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, it came back. It made the changes. Uh, it looks like it kind of overwrote the PR. Yeah, I'm not sure what this draft, if, if it would be different if we started with a draft. Mm. Well, we'll just create a new PR. Yeah. Let's see what it actually does. Yeah, it made it yeah. uh, We'll do the same thing as before. We'll we'll get this running and we'll see if it was able to fix the problems. I did fix that. Very nice. Yeah, I fixed everything. I fixed everything. Fixed well, everything. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. Well so, done. Yeah, guys, I said kudos to Codex. It looks like it did fix everything. This is not a super big feature, uh, but the fact we were able to give it one turn just to say you didn't get this. Technically, it, you know, it hasn't run tests or stuff, so made some pretty reasonable code. It was interesting that when we you know gave it feedback and then push it. You know, push it again it doesn't push the same pr and to be fair they said it's like a research preview this is still awesome the fact that it works with git anyway is a great sign but hey, look it looks like the actual code it wrote was pretty good it ran pretty fast it only took on the magnitude of minutes like that was much faster than even like windsurf like sui one and stuff like that initial impressions are pretty good so pretty impressive we we like that it was able to one implement the feature we asked for, do a traditional web dev task. And then when it didn't do it perfectly the first time, it was able to iterate. And by the second time, this is exactly what we were asking for. It was able to fix those bugs. While this isn't unique to Codex, right? We've done this feature before where we ask for this exact same request. Uh, it's, it's good to see Codex doing well through this type of prompt. Now we want to push it a little further and see, especially because OpenAI is sort of using this internally and they're doing uh, AI research and AI application primarily. So we want to see how well it can do with a sort of AI application task. And so we're going to ask it to create an agent space. Right now, all we have is a chat space where you can chat with a bunch of different models at the same time. And we have the same thing for images and documents and a couple of other modalities. So we want to see if we just ask for an agent space without being too prescriptive, how does it handle that? What we would expect is something similar to this chat space, but where the models are running on a loop and maybe have access to tools. Maybe we can edit the system prompt. We'll see how far it can go. And part of the reason to keep it ambiguous here as well is to see if it also asks questions. So does it just dive into code or is it going to actually stop and, you know, deep research say, what did you mean by these? Um, I think mm -hmm. we just want to push like what the default behavior is here. We've got a very simple prompt typed up here. We're just asking for an agent space and we're clarifying that users will be able to configure and test agents backed by different models. And we've included a very high level definition of what an agent is. I just said an AI agent can accomplish tasks over a longer time horizon, trying to distinguish it from that chat space. We'll send this off and we'll see what it's able to do and really how it interprets this more ambiguous AI application prompt. So while this is working, we're also going to kick off another prompt to show how easy it is to queue up these parallel tasks. So if you've watched the channel before, you've seen our poker or solitaire spaces and so we'll ask for a poker space here and see how which is traditionally a fairly challenging task that's to implement the rules of poker and also the AI application elements so we'll see if it can handle that at the same time we're asking for the poker space and just clarifying that the models are only responsible for selecting their move and that the rules and the orchestration of the game need to be handled deterministically and it's that easy we now have codex working on two tasks in parallel and we could very easily stack more if we wanted and to be fair this is kind of incredible, right? Like right now we're kind of critiquing, oh, it doesn't keep the VM and stuff. But part of, I think the, the selling point of Codex is you can just like 
go ahead and send up like 10 different tasks, go get a coffee, come back, and you've had like 10 different PRs potentially. It's research preview, but it's it's super encouraging to see us like already at this point. We, we were kind of sitting here like idiots waiting for it to finish, but they were both finished. I guess it just wasn't updating the loading string or the loading indicator. First, we'll load up the agent request and see if it was able to implement that, and then we can check in on poker. We got okay. Our agent space. And it, oh, it loads up with two already added. Will it let me add another one? Okay, it does. It seems like it's using the document node. Yeah, got the typo, the some bit, a prompt. So we know it must be copying from the document space. Yeah, that's not a great sign. I specifically asked for the accompanying nodes that are required, so it didn't it describe them for the agents. So it updated yeah. the the string on the on at least the space, Actual space elements. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's give it a goal. As we're picking through this, we realized didn't extrapolate much from the prompt. Uh, it didn't add any concept of tools. We even asked for the ability to configure agents, which it left to, you can configure the model that backs the agent, but yeah. there's no, there are no extra options to even change the system prompt or what, what we would have loved to see is some sort of tool tooling, like realizing that agents require tools. So if you've seen the channel before, this is our maze test. And we were trying to think of something that might benefit from a looping agent, even without tools. And so we're going to give it a, a random maze prompt and see how it's able to do. We've configured the two agents. One is backed by 4.0 and one is backed by 4.0 mini and we'll send off the prompt. So, I mean, at least it did send off stuff. Right. But it looks like a chat request. It's like, just it doesn't a chat look like request, there's any yeah. sort of looping. Um, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. The, I think the PL is only 50 lines, so not unexpected. This is not the worst. Uh, it clearly shows that the, the default behavior is not to ask questions, right? Which you would expect on like a more ambiguous request. It really shows that you need to tell it exactly what to do, right? Sure. It's optimized for instruction following, and so... Right now, it's not going to give you those magic vibe code moments of, I just typed a one sentence prompt in and it implemented agents. I would yeah. have needed to be more prescriptive, it seems, with exactly what I mean by an agent and that I want it to be able to loop and that I want it to have tools. And so for now, we're going to, we're going to move on from this to, to keep it going and to check in on that poker space. Maybe we'll do a live stream at some point where we push it really hard on the agent thing and see how well it can do there. But I guess my takeaway here is that it can handle, especially if there are examples, it can handle some, some amount of using LLMs and we'll see if it's able to take that a step further with poker. But for now, be very prescriptive. The changes are live. And so we'll check out this poker space for the first time and see what it was able to implement. Okay. Okay. So it has nodes for multiple players. It seems like you're kind of fixed at two players. I don't see a way to add more. We'll do the same thing as before, where we'll have one player be backed by 4.0 and one player be backed by 4.0 mini. And we'll see what happens when we start the game. So it looks like it's uh, two simultaneous. Oh, no, no, no. It says your hand and community cards. Okay, well. Yeah, I mean, it did not correctly implement poker. It's showing us the community cards and it's saying that we're in the pre-flop stage. Yeah. So can you click start game again? just to see, like, it probably just resets, right? There's no yeah. concept of big or small blind. There's no bidding. So I'm not really sure. It's just, uh, like, to your point, it's not implemented it correctly. Yeah. Every time and I click it, it... Just separate. So, like, I saw on the four or many, at least, it said call. So with a four of hearts and a five of hearts, it looks like it's getting the same hand each time. So, yeah, this is pretty broken. Yeah. Um so again, I mean, it, it, it built something that runs and that correctly calls the models. And it has yeah. this concept. You can see where it says, like, reply with a single word. It has this concept of, okay, I'm going to need to parse this response at some point. It's clearly mm -hmm. understanding LLM implementation better than some of the things we've tested in the past. But again, yeah. we're hitting this problem where we weren't prescriptive enough with what we wanted. And so it kind of just did a easy first pass seem to implement some of the rules under the hood and it's parsing those rules in the game stage into the prompt but uh in terms of the controls it gave us like the ability to do anything except just reset the game and the and the view it gave us it doesn't show the cards it doesn't do anything fancy in that regard it just uses the chat node so same as before we're seeing glimmers of it being able to do llm implementation and again we'll, we'd love to push this further in the future but for now what we're learning here is you need to be very prescriptive you need to tell it exactly what you want it to do but kudos for for both of these getting something that runs first shot right like it actually did make something that you could click on that so this seems great for like building demos and stuff, but I'm not getting the uh, the true AGI, right? Agreed. And so to really see how far it can go, especially with a bit more of a prescriptive prompt, we're going to switch over to one of our classic game dev tasks that we have a long sort of spec written out for and see how well it's able to do larger implementation challenges, but with some of that 
uh, some of those instructions present. We're all set up for our game dev test. If you've seen the channel before, one of our favorite tests is a procedurally generated planet. And you've also seen that sometimes particularly agentic coding environments struggle with the cold start problem. In some ways, asking for a single HTML file is easier for them because it's a very known environment. It's easy for us to run. But with these agentic coding environments, we want to test their ability to implement a more production ready sort of real life code base. And so we introduced in our windsurf video what I've been calling the vibe shell, which is a super simple environment that one, implements a bunch of the libraries that will be needed, 3JS, Rapier for Physics, as well as Simplex Noise. And then they'll also have access to the, the one sort of main JS file that implements what you're seeing on screen, which just shows how to use those libraries and what syntax will be necessary. So we wanted to overwrite this super simple cube. Uh, I can refresh it so you can see that there are, there is physics and the cube is colliding with this procedurally generated terrain. And so we wanted to overwrite these like 80 lines of code or whatever it took to make this and just use that as a starting point or an example for how to implement our procedurally generated plan. We have a very long prompt for this planet, and so we're hoping that this gets around some of the challenges we were having with our last round of tests where we weren't being prescriptive enough, and so it was being a little lazy and sort of taking things to mean the easiest version of what we were asking. In this case, we're asking for a lot of different features, including the planet terrain and different biomes, the clouds, the atmosphere, and so this is a much larger implementation task, and so we'll see how it performs. So it came back. Our initial reactions is that it's like, pretty sparse you know even mm. though we gave it a, a set of features and I, I asked it specifically for like a well-organized project it created a single file so we'll see what happens we'll see if it was able to implement all those requirements in very few lines of code hmm. okay well it's made not a bad implementation like can we zoom in is that water or is it just like the it kind of looks like water it does kind of look like water and there is an atmosphere. It's, it's like just not very. It's not very high, but th there's definitely yeah, yeah, a distinct yeah. atmosphere and water. It looks not terrible. It's got like a water. It's got an atmosphere. The biomes and the noise look kind of interesting enough. Um, it's obviously missed a lot of the context around adding sliders and other like complexity and so on. So it's certainly done again, like we've been seeing with the other kind of tests we've run. It does kind of almost a lazy implementation, right? Like. This clearly seems to be focused on small bug and very small feature level requests. Giving it a long prescriptive prompt doesn't really seem to like push it in that direction. It seems to almost be capped at like a set limit of like do this much change and then wait for feedback. So, you know, this is not definitely not the worst implementation we've seen. Um, it's just missed quite a lot. Like if you gave this to like one of the other chat GPT models, even in client, it is in the HTML file, but it will pick up a lot more of the context and give probably a slightly more impressive result. At least it's able to operate in context of the code base. Uh, and make something that's fairly reasonable. You know, this didn't blow up. This was a single shot, looked at the code base, made something, and we're able to render it and like actually run it. So kudos for that. Jacob, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think I feel similarly where uh, it did its best to in some like manufactured limit that it has, like mm -hmm. some, I can only make small changes to, to hit all of the requirements. Like it did get the atmosphere and it did get the water. We see that dropping in some some other models that even are sort of unshackled and have the whole HTML canvas to play with. But uh, but yeah, as Dylan said, this is like definitely, uh, it's kind of navigating this. I'm going to do something simple, make small changes, but still get most of the request. And mm -hmm. I, th I think the best thing and the most encouraging thing is that it it's not blowing up. Like we haven't hit any yeah. of those failed to run issues throughout all of these tests. So even yeah. though it's not doing the most impressive performance to our more open-ended prompts or even this sort of larger, more prescriptive prompt, it still is maintaining coherence. It's able to run. Uh, and so I'm excited to test this more sort of in my own use where I have more opinions on how things should be implemented and I can give it way more direct instructions. It seems like it's more of a tool than a marketing stunt, if that makes sense. Anything else to add? Let us know if there's anything else you want us to run. Super excited to see how people use us. Um, please like, comment, subscribe. We really appreciate you following us along for the journey. With Microsoft Build today and with Google's event later this week, it's probably going to be a big week of announcements. So look out for more videos from us and maybe even a live stream with Codex towards the end of the week. As always, give us your feedback and thanks for watching. Good day.